Coming up next, it's a UFC heavyweight division collision. Well, always exciting when this guy shows up on the fight card, Daniel. He is a true mixed martial artist. Not really any glaring weaknesses, at least, that he's put on film thus far. He's the new breed of fighter. Those kids that start doing everything at six years old. They start wrestling, they start doing jiu-jitsu, they start to box. He's one of those guys that has every one of those skills, and he does them all at an A-plus level. He's got tremendous cardio. He is the type of fighter that in a few years will just litter the UFC roster across the board. And oftentimes his opponents will say he doesn't really do anything special, but he does everything at a plus level, and he believes he'll have a lot of advantages in this matchup tonight. So here he is, one of the better grounded pound guys we have in the sport here at present. There's just an efficiency and an accuracy to the way he approaches the ground strikes. No wasted motion out of this guy. Oh, it's, it's an art form, John. It's the way that he goes at his opponents, and the moment they hit the mat, he secures it. Oh, it's off. He doesn't rush. He takes his time. He knows that it does not take much in order to finish a fight. So he'll find his posture. You can't, he doesn't waste time with his head to chest and just punch him. He finds posture. Once he finds posture, he can get momentum to land the big strike, then he moves position. And then he goes and he finds another strike. Before long, you see his opponent's face swelling. You see the eyes all split open and beat. It's truly, truly amazing to watch him and watch his approach to ground and pound. And great cardio allows him to stay heavy. We've seen a lot of fighters just struggle to buck him off. We'll see how it goes tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a mixed martial artist. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at 250 pounds. Fighting out of Coldwater, Michigan, USA, Dan the Beast Seven. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of five wins, three losses. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds, fighting out of Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former UFC heavyweight champion, And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. You ready? All right, so the fight is now underway. On one side, you have a fighter who does everything well, taking on a true grappler on the other side. Going to be interesting to see how long he can keep it up for. I mean, Damian Maya may be the most specialist type of grappler in the UFC. This guy resembles him in a number of ways. Let's see how he manages this fight against a guy that can do just about everything inside the octagon. Really making good use of his reach advantage there with that punch. Pretty good right hand. Just misses with a left hook there. Cuts there for good measure. Let's go. Oh, so huge knee to the head. Look at how fast. The only person I can do this to is maybe John. John, there's a, there's a weight difference. I don't know if you know jujitsu much. You miss a lot of your classes. If I'm gonna do this to anybody, it's Eddie. Oh, you don't want to be anywhere near his guillotine choke. Might have the neck here. Oh, he's stuck in a guillotine. Wow. Well, 
you got to be working off of your back. He's certainly doing so here. Nice punch. Oh, tags him with the left. That is an educated left hand. Educated left hand. He's throwing it so fast, so crisp. All right, we'll see how he chooses to defend here. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. All right, he's sort of hanging out here unguarded, DC. Not sure if he's trying to bait him in or what, but not great body language here. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Severance has got full mount now. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Now he's on top of him looking for the finish. All right, a good ground and pound by him here. Certainly staying busy, and not just busy, but effective. You can just throw punches to keep the referee off of you. This guy is throwing punches to be effective, to throw damaging strikes. He's doing a fantastic job. Final seconds here of round one. Second round, straight ahead. Hey, stop! Right, you lost that round. You tell it to get straight. You need to go out there when you got to put this guy on his back. He's going to come out hard and aggressive. He thinks that you're ready to go home. All right, we now take a look back at some of the highlights from that last round, DC. A lot for the replay guys to choose from. I mean, these guys are going to be very busy trying to find what replay to show you guys. Lands on both sides of the octagon. Both guys fought great. What a phenomenal round. Masterful from here. Oh, he went to a single switch to a high crotch. All right, bottom fighter here. Maybe looking to hip escape, DC. Close guard. Oh, big combination of ground and pound strikes here, DC. This could be the beginning of the end. I mean, you got to be very careful when you take these big ground and pound strikes. You need a controlled posture on the bottom. And if you're the top guy, the guy that's looking to finish, continue to gain posture and rain down big strikes in your opponent. All right, the referee not seeing enough action there. We go back to the center of the octagon now. There you go. There you go. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. Oh, nice job using this. Now he's okay. Now he can escape. Back to the feet now. Oh, and there's a takedown attempt, DC. Not a great one. Might as well tell your opponent. Double leg shot. Oh, how about the slam there? That one cannot feel good. Jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock. And if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. A triangle, a triangle. And he's out. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Back mount now. Oh, nice job to get back up again. You don't want to hang out on the ground with this entry to get on a single. That was a great single. Oh. Nice big takedown. What a technique. What a takedown. Great high-impact skill. You could feel the canvas reverberating here at the Broadway. I mean, right there, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> It's like me running anywhere, John. <laughs> well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. Oh, how about the speed on that reversal there? I mean, I know you can get out of some bad spots, but not with that type of speed. You cannot allow him to get leverage on the bottom. What a sweep. The next with a right. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Take down a template, and it's good. Oh, 
his opponent squirming like a fish out of water now. The ground and pound is on point. This could very well be the beginning of the end. This could be the beginning of the end. We've seen some really good ground and pound fighters. This young man is as good as any we've ever seen. All right, so that's the end of the round. A lot of highlights from which to choose, but his success in that round certainly rooted in his offensive takedown game. And that's what he does, right? He's a grinder. He's the type of guy that wants to get a hold of you, drag you to the floor. It doesn't bother him that much if you get back to your feet. He just wants to continue to make you work the entire time because he understands this type of grind most guys can't keep up with. All right, so we'll see how it goes here in this round. Previous round, it was all him just taking his opponent down, really every time he entered. Yeah, every time he got it on the leg, he was able to secure a finish. And that is the idea you want as a wrestler going into a fight. If you have to change up the technique, it's fine. It's not always going to be the very first attack. When it's the first attack, you're very happy. But most times, you've got to change things together if you want to take down a great fighter. And we know how hard it is to maintain the resting, right? The hours required in the gym to make sure that wrestling's still at a high level. He's putting in the time. Yes, he's putting in the time. And also, you see it in his movement. When he gets to an attack, he's constantly shifting positions. He's constantly moving his opponent. He's constantly trying to give him too much information to process. Right. And that comes with a lifetime of wrestling. If he just started this, it would be very... Oh, looks like he's trying to isolate an arm, maybe set up a Kimura here, DC. Yeah, he's going to try to attack a Kimura here. He'll try to get him up on his right hip. The Kimura is not the arm. It's the shoulder pressure that usually makes you tap. And he's out. Well, you got to stay busy on the bottom. He's doing it here. Nice punch. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. All right, he's got the full mount now. Is this one of the most dominant positions in MMA? Is that fair to say? It's a very dominant position. It's one of the most ideal positions you can get to, especially if you are fighting someone that doesn't truly understand that they're not in as much danger as they are. Because it's dangerous, but there are a lot of outs. And if a person isn't very understanding of that, then you can really, really put some damage on them. Man, this is some serious ground and pound here, DC. He's not just staying busy for the sake of staying busy. These strikes are doing damage. Oh, yeah, no pity patch to this guy. This guy's trying to land, and he's trying to land effective strikes. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent. Got to be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Oh, reversal here, DC. What a way to switch the position. Fantastic movement by the bottom fighter. Good movement by him here, transitioning very well on the ground side. Step for step, he's staying with his opponent in every transition. All right, so he's got the body locked down here, DC, or so it appears. This is not a guy you want anywhere near your back. Man, isn't it fun to watch this dude work on the ground? Now he'll try to start attacking a rear naked choke from the top position. He is doing a really good job of relaxing, not panicking, because he's getting choked. Oh, he might have got him with a choke. Submits courtesy of the rear naked choke. That guy's got a squeeze on him. He does a great job securing the position, getting under the neck, and then hiding his hands in order to get the finish. Fantastic performance by this fighter. Tower! Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness. What a fight. Well, yeah, so the work in the gym pays off here tonight as he gets the win by submission. Gorgeous setup on the choke, and I think even better execution down the stretch. Clearly, it was sunk in deep. His opponent had no choice but to tap or take a nap. In this case, he chose to tap out. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard. He's so skilled. He's so tricky, and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it that he made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Levine has called a stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 40 seconds of round number 3. Declaring the winner by tap out, Brian!